Today we talk about smart scopes. Why smart scope is an absolutely stupid name, what we really mean with smart scopes, and what the best advanced smart scope is presently, all that right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So let's start right with my claim that smart scope is a very stupid and misleading name. Why? Where comes this expression smart from? Smartphone, right? Why is it called like that? We had regular phone, which you could only use for making a call. Now you have smartphones, which can do email and internet and whatever you want. You have a smart washing machine. Why is it called like that? Because a regular washing machine can only wash your clothes. But a smart washing machine you can remote control and it tells you when it's finished. It can do something else, something smarter. Now let's take, uh, and I just pick randomly the Dwarf 3 which just came out, which is a smart scope. Now is a Dwarf 3 smarter than my huge astrophotography rig? I don't think so. There is nothing which a Dwarf 3 can do, which my large rig can't do too. And the processing power of my Eagle is definitely much higher than the one of a Dwarf 3. And we could say the same about the C-Star and of any other of these small smart scope devices. So they're not smart, they're, they're not stupid, but they're not smarter than a regular astrophotography rig. So then the question is, what is a smart scope? And if we take now the sea star, the dwarf, because that's where the origins lie as examples, first of all, what makes them unique, they're integrated. There's just this plastic box which you take out of the package and you turn it on and it works. There's no cables you have to put together, no separate elements you have to put together. It's this one device, like you have a camera, like you have your coffee machine, or your TV or whatever else. We're used to that. We take a device out of the box and we use it and we get annoyed if we have to buy 10,000 things separately and plug it together by cables. So something being integrated is definitely a very attractive proposition. So what else? A smart scope is something lightweight, compact. Again, that's what I hear a lot, what people enjoy about the Sea Star, about the Dwarf. It's tiny, it's small, you can take it with you, you can take it easily outside, even if it's a little bit cloudy, no big thing. You can take it on vacation. We like that. And again, that makes smart scopes very attractive. And the third thing is the ease of use. I do not have to learn PICS inside. I don't have to get a PhD in engineering just to plug all the stuff together. It just works. I turn it on, I get my smartphone out and I have some nice pictures on there. So let's sum that up in a statement. People want to shoot beautiful pictures with the least amount of effort. And that's what the expectations are should a smart scope deliver. And that works perfectly well in the size range and quality range of a Sea Star, of a Dwarf 3, but we are all aware that these are entry level scopes. It's great for beginners, it's great for children, and it's great for advanced amateurs who want to have fun. But when we come to an advanced amateur level, the smart scope can in no way compare to a real astrophotography rig. And that obviously leads to the question by the consumers, but also by the producers, can't we create a smart scope for advanced amateurs so that I can sell something which has all these advantages of a smart scope, but which is actually a match for these highly complicated, bulky astrophotography rigs that we presently use. And until now, there was only one company brave enough to bring a proposal which would fill exactly this gap. And that was Celestron with its origin. Now between you and me, when did you last time hear about the Celestron origin? Or did you ever see it in the wild? 
Not that I know. Recently someone actually posted the review but I think we can all agree it's not the big success. So why is this? And let's use these three points we just identified with the sea star, with the dwarf, with the small class on the Celestron origin. And let's start with the integration. Is the Celestron origin integrated? And the answer is yes, absolutely. But now comes the problem. Do we really, really want that on that price level? Because you see, Dwarf, they just released the Dwarf 3 and before we had the Dwarf 2 and probably soon Sibo will also release a new Sea star and become in the same game as we had with our smartphones. We throw one away, we buy a new one or we give one to our children, we buy a new one. And if it's in the $500 price range, for most of us, this is okay, like it was okay with the smartphones, which are at the same price range. But when we talk about a $4,000 rig like the Celestron Origin, it sounds a little bit scary that in a year we might have to throw it away and buy another $4,000 smart scope. And there is something more. While we like the integration, we also like to have a choice. For example, when it comes to the focal lengths, 355 millimeter, it's good for a lot of stuff. But for some, it's too narrow, for some, it's too wide. It would be great to just choose our scope and put it on there, right? And not be locked in with the 355 millimeters. And the same with the camera. Camera technology still evolves and why Celestron said it's modular and they might produce better ones, given the rather limited success they have with it, I would say that's questionable if this is ever happening. So in this advanced level, too much integration might also be a disadvantage. So let's go to the next. Compact and lightweight. The Celestron Origin weighs 18 kilograms. That's definitely not lightweight and it's actually rather big with its Raza on top. This is not something you just put under your arm and take with you. This is not something you take with you on vacation. So it also fails in this regard. And the ease of use, yeah, we can say it fulfills that. It has an app and you can look at the stuff right through the app. You don't need an additional processing software, so fine. But there is something else. When we go on an advanced level, we want to have advanced quality. That's the whole purpose. And to be on that advanced level, we need to be able to do long time exposures, to also gather the faint nebulosities. And we need a high quality camera who can actually capture that in the right way. And here again, the origin totally fails. It has a small camera sensor, which is actually available for $300 as a separate camera. It's uncooled. It's no equatorial mount. It's unguided. So the exposure time is rather short. And here we're practically on a level of a sea star of a dwarf, simply obviously with, with a much larger scope on top. But otherwise, it shares practically the same properties. So while I give Celestron kudos for trying it and definitely starting something which hopefully continues and also motivates other producers to give it a try, I would personally say that this attempt failed. So but what I promised you at the beginning that I found the ideal advanced smart scope and I wanted to present it to you right now. So here we go. Best advanced smart scope presently available. You might say, I know all this stuff. Why is this a smart scope? This is just a normal, small, but normal rig. Well, let's go through the three points that we covered before. But let's first look at what it actually is. Just for everybody, if it's not that obvious, it's an ASCAR FRA 400. This could be another scope. This is now just what I had. It's the ASI 2600 MC Air. It's the Sivo AM3 mount together with the tripod. 
and connected an EAF, an electronic focuser. And also for full transparency, I got the ASI 2600 MC Air from Sivo for testing purposes. After the test, I can send it back or buy it. The AM3 and the tripod, I got generously from Switzerland, from Zumstein Optik, which is the biggest astro retailer in Switzerland. It's on loan. I have it for one month, then I have to give it back. And for my Swiss friends, whenever you buy something about astrophotography, check out Zumstein Optik before you go into a Tiffley you have to buy in Germany or so. A lot of time, these guys are cheaper and they give you an amazing service. With that, let's go through the three propositions of a smart scope. Is it integrated? Camera, guide camera, computer is integrated. We have an additional scope and we have a mount and that's it. So in principle, three elements. And from my point of view, that's as integrated as it should be. As soon as you start to integrate more, you run into the issue that you cannot configure it in a way that you want. You want to be able to change the scope from my point of view. That's the main thing. You need different focal length. And sometimes, if you want a much bigger scope, you need a bigger rig. And by the way, it's very easy actually, especially with these components to put them together. A child could do that. But usually where people struggle is with the guiding, with all the cables going to the camera from the computer and so on. And so having that here integrated in the air makes the whole thing so much easier. And I know some give the counter argument that the air is a bad idea because if anything on either one of the cameras or the computer goes wrong, you lose the whole element until it's repaired. But my challenge would be that usually you do not have a spare camera on that level and you do not have a second ASI Air just lying around. So when anything breaks, like an ASI Air, like a camera, you're anyway screwed until this part is repaired. So I don't see really the point there. Second point, lightweight, compact. Obviously it's not a sea star, it's not a dwarf, but you know what? I can hold it up with one hand. It's 10 kilograms. So it's about half the weight of the origin. And we could obviously put on there still a little bit lighter scope, would make it even a little bit more lighter. But that's something which you realistically can take even on air travel with you. The mount and the scope plus the camera would go in your hand luggage and the tripod would go in your suitcase and you're fine. So given how lightweight and compact an advanced rig can be, it is. And the third thing is ease of use. I will create a video where I will show you from the very start, from the unboxing, how to put that thing together like it is right now and shoot photos. And I would say that it is almost as easy to use as a sea star or a dwarf. Obviously not completely, there's polar alignment. But again, we have also to take into consider this is a different level. And then comes the quality. It has a cooled camera. It has one of the best sensors presently with the IMX571. It's APS-C. It has guiding. It is an equatorial mount. So from that point of view, this rig is in no way worse than a traditional astrophotography rig. All it is, it is easier to use, it is more compact, and it is more integrated, which again leads to less cable, less complications. So I'm really interested now what you think. Does my rational make sense to you? Or what else would you expect from an advanced smart scope? Where should the industry go? Where should we evolve to get even to a better smart scope? Please leave your opinion in the comments below. I'm really curious and I'm thrilled to have this conversation with you. As stated, because as you might know until now, I was not so much into Sivo land. And I'm thrilled myself to build this together and to try it out. I never until now used an ASI Air. I never even touched one. So 
I will do it with you for the first time in the next video and I will share with you my honest opinion how my experience was setting this up and using it. See you next time and clear skies. Thank you.